All right, guys, this is just a quick exercise that we did last week. I just want to, um, yeah, I just some students asked if I can make a video of it. It's just some basic type things. None of it was due. It was just doing a good thing, good things to know. So this is our stuff here. I'm just going to hide, show hidden characters. We'll hide them. So all we're really doing here is just doing heading. So 32 on 32 will show you where point size and leading is. Range left, so it's over here. Um, 12 point space after there. Body copy, we've got 12 on 12, fully justified, and five points space between each gap. We're going to convert some text to outline, we'll put some text on a path, and we'll use the body copy area title. They're probably the four main things that you would do for text in Illustrator, that's why I've sort of chosen. So this stuff here, I could have just drawn a text box, and it will just put text in it, but I've got one here. So what happens is when you get text in a box, it's literally just there. The good way to work is with hidden characters. So if I say show hidden characters, you can sort of see there's a return there, there's one there, but it goes all the way through. Remember, a few of us have been doing this. That box, this is just a good thing. That little red square with the plus in it means that there's text in that box that doesn't fit. I can either drag the box down and that red box, that little box will disappear. Or the other way to do it, if you can't change the box, what you can do is click on that box and you can see my cursor's got some text attached to it, and then draw a box here, and you can see that line is saying this is the overset text for that box. So if I wanted to, I could go through and delete the last bit of that. I could delete that, but remember, you've also got to go back and delete the box as well. Okay? That's just a good thing. It's just a good way to check overset text, because you can see here when I delete that box, not the text, but the box, it runs back into that box. Right, so the couple of things I want to do here, straight up, whatever my size was, Ready to condense black, 33, 32. So this stuff here, it's just standard. I like to go Command-T, which opens the type tool. So we've got Helvetica. Use Helvetica New, it's just got more, there's more font families to it. And these are asking for a size here, 32 on 32. So here, I'm going to hit 32. And if this is set, what we're showing you here, Whoever's designed Helvetica New, they know that when you use 32 point, they want you to use 38 point leading. Remember, leading is the gap between the base, that baseline and that line. That's the leading in there. That's what they're talking about. We do a lot of this in type, but this is just Gav's version of it. So that's that thing. I'm going to drag this box down. So this next stuff, we'll fix all the spacing. Another thing I like to do is just double click in that, go Command A, select all. Under paragraph formatting, just turn the hyphenation off because it's always quite ugly. So that's the first thing we've done. We've just got that. That's the first sizing, which is here. This body copy is 12 on 12. So I'm going to go from here all the way down. And that's just character formatting, just 12. And here I'm going to manually put 12 in there. That looks good. I'm going to now do a couple of things. I want some space after this words here. So what I want to do is put my, we've done this, this is paragraph formatting, this is that paragraph thing there, the backwards P, that's to do with paragraph formatting, it's really important. So you put your cursor anywhere behind, anywhere this side of that thing, and go to paragraph, and this one, and it even tells you space after paragraph. So I'm going to put some space, I'm going to push that down a bit, that's just doing that one line. I'm going to select all of these guys, I'm going to go across all of this, because if I just put this here, and do five points, if I say five here, it's only going to put it in one paragraph because I'm only behind one return. But if I want to do everything, I've got to go from here down and then go five and put five and that'll do that. Remember, you can do this different ways. You can have zero, you can have first line indent if it's more magazine related. But all it's doing is whenever it gets to return, it's doing what it, you asked it to do here. So if I turn off my show hidden characters, that looks a bit more like that's more magazine. It's got a first line indent. So this one, I'm going to take the first line in there now. And in this case, we'll just do some spacing here. This last paragraph, I'm going to do... Oh, remember, you can click once for the word, twice or twice or three times, does the whole paragraph. So this case, this would be Helvetica, but in this case, I'm just going to make this, this one, so bold. That font's quite bigger, so I'm going to make the font, just remember to start to think like this, that's kind of, the bold makes a bigger font, so I've made it slightly smaller just to make it look a bit neater. So that's good, but we wanted this to be 12 on 12, I think, well, yep, that's it, all good. That's this space, that's this one. So a couple of things I want to do now, just say if that had another word, right, 
if I wanted to run that word or down, okay, what happens? Because I've, I've this is really important, because I've asked it to do nine point spacing after the return, just say I wanted to run the word or down. If I hit a return, it's going to give me nine point spacing because that's what I've asked it to do. I've said to it, space after this paragraph. So if I do a paragraph, so the way you do that one is what you do is you, if you want to run the word or down, a soft return or shift enter will push the or down. You can see there's a funny little return there. So that's called a soft return. That will run it down. Same as here. If I want to run that last word down, which isn't a word, but if I click on that, if I was to hit return, it will give me the space after, which is not what I want. I want a shift return or just run that down. So when you've done your text, you go into it, you look, there's all sorts of things you can do to this. Remember, you've got your char par character formatting under character, show options, you've got capitals, you've got spacing, you've got kerning, there's a world of stuff that we will work on there. So turn hidden characters off, and that's not, oh, this is justified text, so this stuff, this is paragraphs related, so under paragraph, that's justified with the last line to the left, last line centered, last line right, and fully. So you really want that one. Um, remember that's just paragraphs there, paragraphs up here, and paragraphs also, or it, there's 20 ways to do the one thing, but I find if you go Command T and open up these two windows, they're just there, and it works really well, I like using those ones. Um, that's it, that's just how you put text in a box, okay, that spacing's way too much, so I'd go into that one, and I would make that a bit less, and that's starting to look like it should. This as well, you'd sort of play around with this a bit with character. So that's 32, and that's asked for 32 on 32 here. That's 32 point, and that's too much. So I'm going to make that less, and you can see that brings it up a bit. That looks quite good, ready to go. That's the first one. That's just text in a box. Next one, I'll move them out the way. This is just how you start to draw logos and bits and pieces. We've done a lot of this, but this word lot, if I just click there, remember, we're not going to click a box and type lot, because what happens, that text is in a box, similar to the text that we just did. That was by drawing a box. What we want to do is just click once, and just type the word lot. So these guys here, they look exactly the same, okay? They look exactly the same, but this one, because I've just clicked once on the machine, it's given me this sort of bounding box, so I can stretch that around, I can move it, I can rotate it, I can do all sorts of things. Because this is treating this like it's text in a text box, if I grab this box, if I rotate that, it moves the box. If I try to scale it, it just does that. So it's not what you want when you're just doing one-off words. But don't worry about it. You can fix it really easily. This little circle here, it just, if you double-click on that, it'll turn it into the thing that we want, and then it's a scalable thing. So I'm going to start to muck around with this word and do all sorts of fun things with it. That was pretty daggy, wasn't it? But what you tend to do, because you know that that's a font, that's Myriad Pro, and once you convert this to outlines, what I tend, it's gone. So it doesn't come back to be the font again. So just as a habit option, just click one over there. So you've still got it in case you want to change it or do something different. Now I've done that. It's really simple. Just type, create outlines, and that will turn that into a editable little box and all sorts of wonderful things. So you can then use the direct selection tool. I can get the T. I can drag over the bottom of the T. I can move that down. I can make that round, I can grab these guys, or that top one, if I want to make that into a square, I can move that up into a square, okay, so that's what, that's what, that's where you start with the font, so if I put a box there, okay, I've just got a, a coloured box there, should never use those colours, but just in this case, but I've got that there, I can then grab that, I can use my pathfinder, I can minus front, I can use shape builder, I can hold option down, I can knock out the middle, I can do all sorts of things. So that started with a font, okay, we converted it to outlines, I can ungroup it, and then I've got these guys as individual shapes, okay, I can put that together, I can grab those two, I can use shape builder, I can merge it together, there's a bunch of things you can do, okay, um, that's going to go here, all that sort of stuff, so that's all of this, so that starts with the word, and all I've done is just gone type, create outlines, and that's that. That's how you sort of start to draw a font. This next one is just text on a curve. This is quite simple, but it's a little bit sort of fiddly. There's a couple of things to know. I want a circle. Hold shift down, a perfect circle. You've been played around with this type stuff. We've done type. We've done area type. This is type on a path tool. So if I'm just going to click there, and I'm just going to type on circle. 
to this stuff, right? I've just got text on a circle, and that there looks centered, that looks okay. But there's a few things you want to know with this one. So if I click on that one, all these lines appear. I can click on this guy, and I can drag that around, and, and I can center that, and that looks good. So that's the center of the circle. That's good for a one-off thing, but if I just take the word circle, or if I make that circle plus, or whatever it is, that's not centered anymore. So what you want to do, this is a bit fiddly, but just you'll get good at it. What it is, that's the center of the line. I can drag that to the middle. Okay, that's how you get it on the bottom. It's very, very sensitive. It's very clicky to click on it. But what I tend to do, because I clicked here, that just gives you a start and a finish point. So what I do is I grab these two points and I'll put one there, put that one there. So that line there is the start, that line's the finish, that's the center. Now, if I center that on its own self, because I've got that, then whatever I do here, I can get rid of all those and just put one. It's always going to be centered, okay? So it's always going to run around evenly. And if it goes longer than one than that, click on these ones and just drag them down again. So wherever they are, they're really helpful. They'll snap into being in this right spot, and that there is where it sits inside of it, okay? That's all. That's just text on a curve. All we did was just went type, type on a path, put on the... If you want it's one to go underneath it, you'd have to probably copy that make a new layer because the reason being so if I go edit don't go paste because it'll just paste it in the middle of your computer screen if I go command F or paste in place or paste in front I've got one exactly on top of the other one so if I drag that one down here that's going to be on the same circle but it's just on a different layer the reason you want it on different layers is it gets really fiddly dicking about trying to get to the layers behind it it, it, it does it, it gets so this is So you can text it as, uh, it's supposed to say base, um, or gaze. But that's that sort of stuff. Then there's all sorts of things you can do from that, you know what I mean? But that's that's it. So another kind of trick or things like that, if you go edit, copy, make another layer, and go edit, paste in place, just remember, or paste in front, command C's copy, and then that's, and command F's paste in place. So I'm gonna get that one, I'm going to take all that text off. This is helpful if you don't have a circle. So I'm going to take all that text off, and I'm pretty sure that box. Oh no, that's okay. Ignore all that. That's for another day. Um, that's it. So that's just that's that stuff. Okay. The last one, and we've done a lot of this, so I'll just lock all those off. That's text on a curve. That's up here. This one, we've been doing this over and over again. Some people put text in a box. You can do this two ways. You can do your text box. That's got type in it. I'm going to make it just 12 point. I'm into 12 point at the moment. Make it not capitals. We want some more text, not bold. So just every every time you put text in a box, really think about what you've done. You know what I mean? That's kind of the thing. So this stuff, I'm going to run this over to the left up here. I'm going to come to the end of the line. This is a good one. Type. Fill with placeholder text, it'll just fill the rest of the text. I've got some weird letting from before, so I'll make that auto. That's getting pretty close. Type, mm -hmm. fill with placeholder text, so we're good. So I'm going to curve the bottom of this box. So this is done by clicking here. This will give you the circles. Everyone knows this one to do all of them. But if you click on the direct selection tool, then click on that one circle, I've then got one circle. So that'll curve my circle. This stuff we've done before. All we want to do here is make the outline bold. You can see that fills black. If I go to the direct selection tool, come into the edge of the box and just click there, and that's that stroke, I want to fill that black. I want to push it in from the outside a bit. So type, so we want area type option. So back to this one, type, area type option, and this insert spacing. So I'm going to push that in from the edge so that looks quite good. Okay. Remember, we've got some overset text in there, so we've got that red box in there. So the way we fix that, click on the little red box, click on the little red box. It's always a bit fiddly. And drag that, and I've got that much text left over. So I'll just go to here and just delete back and just delete all that back to there. Get rid of the box. So that's type on a path. I noticed that a few people, some people, were, they did the box and then the background. You want to try and keep it in the same box. If I want to make that a colored background, if I click on that one, I can fill that green. I can come to my opacity and I can make the opacity of that green. So there's all sorts of things you can do. It's just nicer to have text in one box. That is all of those things there. Okay. Cheers, guys.
but it's just type. Just whenever you put text on a page, don't just put it in a box and think you're finished. Get rid of hyphenation. Check the letting. Is it right? Is it got spacing? Is it centered? Okay. And is it a nice font? Does it suit the job? All right. Thanks, guys.